But the next morning and the next and the next, I was back at it again. When we knew the H-4 pretty well, we were briefed on the streamliners, the newest and smoothest thing on rails. The controls are a little different than those on the H-4, and your feet play a more important part of car operation. During rough-edge training, there was plenty of opportunity to handle the controls. And while operating on practice runs, safety was one of the most important lessons. A streetcar isn't an automobile. It can't swerve, and it takes much more space to come to a smooth stop. Accidents are dangerous, expensive, and even fatal. You got to use your head, your eyes, and your hands. And take it for granted, every truck and automobile on the road is driven by a blind man. Carelessness on your part can cost you your job. Also on the practice runs, I learned how to throw an electric switch. How to use a crossover. What to do at railroad crossings. taking along a few cars. And the careful observation of traffic signals. During those four days, I worked hard running safe car operation. With my rough edges knocked off, I went back to the classroom for a concentrated course in reports and handling of money. First, we were taught the operation of the fare box. When to use an outbound transfer, inbound transfer, which transfers are acceptable in the inner and the outer zones. Price of tokens, weekly passes, time schedules and how to read them, how to fill out trip sheets at the end of the day, the avoidance of unnecessary conversation, when it's permissible to pass up passengers, how to place an emergency call to the dispatcher's office when we were in trouble, and the importance of safety, courtesy and service in all our dealings with our passengers. Then another instructor took over to explain safety factors to us. How to recognize accident traps, how to avoid accidents, and how to fill out accident forms if you did get into trouble. A motion picture was shown to illustrate accident tra traps. Here's one of the more common traps. As the streetcar approaches an intersection, an automobile speeds up alongside the streetcar, and without warning, it cuts across in front of the car, causing the collision. Whether this accident was the operator's fault or not, he must have the names of his passengers. He hands out courtesy cards to the passengers and to any other witnesses available. Gets the driver's name, address, license number, and immediately calls the dispatcher's office, and then picks up the signed card. When he returns to division headquarters, he gets an accident report, fills it out, and files it with the clerk's office. Remember always, safety is of utmost importance to your passengers, your company, and your job. Transfers, trip sheets, accident traps, safety. More and more, I was beginning to realize that it's a big job. Yes, it's a big job, and it requires lots of support. I got some idea of this support when taken on a tour of inspection. We get it all the way down the line, from the men who keep the engines in shape, to the electricians, upholsters, 
body repair men, painters, maintenance crews, track men, clerks, dispatchers who receive emergency calls 24 hours a day, roving supervisors who go out on those calls, loaders who make loading operations easier at busy corners, and the line supervisors who help keep the entire system moving. All of them playing important parts in backing me up. It came to me then that they were depending on the man who accepts the dime. The man who meets the public. The man who is actually the company's ambassador. In many ways, the most important man in the organization is the operator. After I'd learned something of the size of the organization in back of me, I was assigned to a line instructor to learn the routes of that division one at a time while on regular runs. Sometimes I handled the controls while the instructor took the fares. Other times the instructor took the controls while I fumbled my way through fares. learning transfer points and time points, crossovers, fire stations, police stations, and call boxes. After a few days on this line, a division instructor came aboard and checked me out on what I'd learned. I had a similar examination from the division instructor on every line in the division. At the end of my training period, I returned to division headquarters for a comprehensive examination of all I had learned since I started training. I passed, and now I was really on the team. I looked on the schedule for the next day's assignment and found I was to start my solo run at 6 o'clock that next morning. Of course I was there in plenty of time, as nervous as a bubble dancer in a shooting gallery. I checked out my transfers and the car number, copied down my time schedule and headed for my car. I was proud as a peacock as I got ready for my solo run. Skipper Bill Weston takes over. 